Chief Steve Dunstone and was pleased to be involved with uh, Charles Law Meridian um, to bring the first two Benning Bronzes back to Benning City. Um, looking back, it was obviously a momentous and important turning point. I don't know how you feel, Charles. Looking well, I'm, I'm Dr. Charles Omoradian, and uh, I am very happy that uh, we were able to work together, uh, Chief, uh, to return uh, the two artifacts, the Ayamuro and Egogo, uh, to this Royal Majesty. Well, there's a guy over here who um, called Nigel Farage, and he spent his life to remove the UK from Europe and he's achieved his objective. When I looked at the objective of returning all the bronzes back to uh, Benin, it was virtually mission impossible. So to have the opportunity through Mark Wall to get two back was a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And I had to, I had to speak to Mark for, for a few weeks because he thought those two items might be looted. But I explained to him that his, his gesture is, is, would be so significant it could reverberate around the world and have huge impacts on other museums and institutions. Now, as years have ticked on, to see that actually come true, what I said to Mark, um, feels like a huge sense of achievement and I'm overwhelmed. I'm very happy that um, it's happened, especially for the people of Benin City. I, um, again, was very, very excited when I saw the two bronzes that we returned back, we successfully returned back in 2014, being displayed at the Palace of His Royal Majesty of uh, Ewari II, Ogidiga. Uh, the process of returning that uh, Benin bronzes uh, in 2014 uh, was twofold. Firstly, I was at home one day, a colleague of mine, Dr. Samuel Egariva, called me to say that uh, there was an interview given by Chief Dustin and Tim uh, Awoyomi on Ben Television, uh, suggesting that they were trying to make contact with the uh, palace for over a two years period. And unfortunately, uh, they've, not, uh, they've not received any response from the, uh, the palace of, uh, of the Auburn. And I immediately contacted Ben Television, tried to get in touch with uh, uh, Chief Dustin and the uh, team. Unfortunately, they wouldn't give me their contact details for confidentiality. Um, but they did promise me that there was going to be a repeat program the next Wednesday. Yeah, I would like to mention uh, the help uh, we had from um, the Benny Elders um, UK in London. Um, when tasked with getting these two items back to um, Benin City uh, um, from Mark Walker, we did need some assistance and uh, uh, Charles Ormerudian um, and his colleague Samuel, amongst others, were instrumental in listening to our needs, uh, helping communication from London to the Royal Household and to facilitate that wonderful um, um, demonstration of, um, of appreciation when, the, when we actually entered Benin City. And on the repeat program, I watched the repeat program and I found uh, uh, what they were saying was quite credible and uh, very interesting and I decided to find out more about them. I did my own research, I went through a lot of databases, uh, particularly during that uh, exchange uh, Steve has mentioned a security firm that he's uh, also working, working uh, for, that belongs to him. And he mentioned Richard's Lander Group. So I did Google search and after a long search and all that, I came to Company's House. <laughs> and Company's House, I was able to find details of the company and details of the address. And I managed to track down the company and I called him. I think it was the lady that picked it up and the lady promised that he would call me back. He called me back and uh, I wanted to confirm the authenticity of their uh, assertion that they've got these two bronzes that they want to return back. And I haven't listened to him and we had a number of telephone exchanges. I promised him that if those bronzes were real, I would be able to organize a meeting with him 
a week. And he was quite happy about that. No, this, this was a one-off. He only knew about these items when his mother died. Um, so this was a one-off opportunity. He saw my website, he saw I was seeking um, any information about the Benning Bronzes, and it, and it went from there. So I called the Adir Way, informed the Adir Way of uh, what I've just discovered, or what we've discovered, and a uh, meeting was called. And myself and uh, Dr. Samir Egariwa met in my office. Uh, we sort of rubbed mind on how the meeting was going to go. And in that process, we decided to um, speak to the Nigeria High Commission. We had one or two contacts with the Minister for Culture, and the Minister for Culture then gave us two other ministers uh, who came to represent the Nigeria High Embassy at the meeting we had at a Bronx Restaurant here in London. Uh, at the meeting, or prior to the meeting, we were already contacting his Royal Highness Prince uh, Edward Akenzua, the Onogi of uh, uh, Obazua, and intimating him with all the things we were doing and the extent to which we have gone. He advised us to uh, involve his daughter, which we did. And uh, at the meeting at the Bronx, uh, the daughter came and read a, um, a prepared statement. And we, there was also the Nogi of, uh, uh, I'm not quite sure what is it, was it Nogi of, I'm not quite sure, but another Nogi was there also representing the royal family. So the, the meeting was well attended. All members of the Ojewe Council were there. We were able to see the bronzes first hand. It wasn't just the bronzes. There was also a diary that was kept by Mark Walker's uh, great-grandfather. And this diary meticulously, meticulously detailed all the things that happened during the 1897 punitive expedition. It mentioned how the bronzes were looted, how the loot was shared, and some of the things that happened. So we also prevailed on Steve, uh, Chief Steve I should say, and team to avail us of that diary. Uh, they were able to give us two copies of the diary and uh, the good thing about the copies they gave to us is that they used the technology that was available as at 1897 to replicate the diary such that you probably would not know the difference between the original diary and uh, the diary we presented to Oba Eridiawa and a copy to uh, Prince Edwin Akenzoa, the Enogi of uh, Obazua. I mean, Mark wanted the items to be returned to uh, the Oba, the spiritual home of the Benny Bronzes. I wanted the president to receive the items to really get maximum publicity. Um, now, just to get the president to receive them was not a was not a simple task. This was um, good luck, Jonathan. Good luck, um, good luck, Jonathan. Um, so when um, we heard that the president was arranging for a press conference in Abuja, which was against Mark Walker's wishes and the Oba of Benin. Um, there was some diplomacy needed to be done via the um, British High Commission. So then the Benin people, they chose to buy our tickets, new tickets to uh, Lagos, was met by police and got a police escort into Benin City, just to avoid the possible of a presidential hijack. When we started this process, after we met at Bronze Restaurant, the delegation from the Nigeria High Commission came. Uh, we then went back to my office the following, the following week. Myself and Dr. Egariwa decided, okay, let's pay a courtesy call to uh, the Nigeria High Commission to thank them for the support. So we all went. They invited us. We met uh, His Excellency Elaji uh, Tafa. Is it Tafita? I'm not quite sure what his name is. You know, who was the High Commissioner there? He received us very well. Um, Mark Walker, Steve, uh, Chief Steve, and uh, Mr. Tim Awoyeme, we all went with a delegation from the Odionwe uh, Council, the elders. We went to the High Commission and presented our case. They were very excited because it was one of a kind. They are used to 
Nigerians calling them for birthday party and all that, but this was a sea change in terms of their engagement with the Nigeria community. And as a result, they offered to pay for the trip of uh, the three people who were uh, coming from the Richard Landers uh, Foundation. That was for um, Chief Dustin, uh, Mark, Wo uh, Mark Walker, and Tim. But for the rest of us that were of Benin uh, extractions, we were told to uh, look after ourselves. We, we didn't mind because we were more excited that these particular artifacts were going back to the Royal Palace. Uh, a week later, I got a phone call from Chief Dossi saying that uh, they have been called to the Nigeria High Commission for a brief meeting. And in that meeting, uh, it looks as if a minister from Nigeria flew down to Nigeria uh, Embassy. And uh, uh, rather than returning the artifacts to the Royal Benin Palace, the minister were of the opinion that the artifacts should be returned to the National Museum in Abuja. And when he spoke to me, I wasn't very happy about it. And I decided to call the ambassador and uh, call our contact there for a follow-up meeting. Uh, myself, uh, Steve, uh, Chief Steve and Tim and other contingent went to the Nigeria Embassy to tell them in no certain terms that this artifact belongs to the Benin and it should be returned to the Benin. As this were going on, we were always in contact with His Royal Highness uh, Prince Edru Akenzwa, who was more or less our link to the, to the palace. Um, the meeting was very, very ferocious because I was up in hand, I was knocking tables and all that. I was accused of being too emotional about the artifacts. Uh, at one point I was asked, does it belong to your father or are you a member of the um, royal household? I said, well, it doesn't matter. Every Benin man would be concerned about these artifacts because these artifacts are not just artifacts, they mean a lot to us. There are both cultural, spiritual, and traditional attachments to these artifacts. So eventually, cut the long story short, when we couldn't negotiate with the Nigeria High Commission to allow these artifacts to go to Benin, they then threatened us that the um, uh, travel ticket, which they've already promised to pay, they're not going to pay for it. And these were just a couple of days to the days that we set to return these artifacts to Benin. And uh, we did what we could together with uh, Prince Edu Akenzua, and they were able to organize tickets for uh, Tim and Chief Justin and Mark Walker uh, to uh, take these artifacts to Nigeria and which was quite, quite successful. I'll never forget the first time that uh, Tim, he produced the two bronzes onto the table and there was a surge from that group towards us and, and then it became apparent, both Tim and I, just how important these, these bronzes were. You, know, you, you could see tears in the eyes of some of the, some of the people there. And that was, that was really reflected when we actually went to Benin City and there were many hundreds surging towards us with, with tears in their eyes, so it was so important, those two items. As it's proved, it's turned out to be a catalyst to, to get other items back, which is great to see. It was a, a mixture of sombre excitement and elation because we were excited to see them in a reform. These are those stories. Um, although most of us have been to the British Museum before. We've seen some of these uh, artifacts displayed in the British Museum. I remember on one of those visits, a colleague of mine burst out and started crying. Because he was crying, uh, he found something that belongs to his, his family. He was of the Igun uh, uh, family, one uh, Mr. It was now Pastor, Pastor Monday. Ibude, and he shouted, that's my father, that's my father. That was the Uhure that belongs to his family. But to people looking at it, 
they were artifacts. But to talk, for the top of us, that's a representation of our ancestors. You know, the Benin, particularly those of us from the royal family, uh, we have uh, a staff that each family uh, keeps that passes from the father to the eldest son once the father departs this earth. Uh, to those people who were there, uh, especially when the bronzes were brought out, there was tears rolling down to some of our eyes. It was a mixture of sadness and joy. Sadness in the sense that uh, these things were carted away uh, without our express authority. Joy in the sense that uh, at least one or two of these is now going back to where it belongs. So I've, I've been really pleased on hearing the news, what's been going on with uh, different institutions, different countries returning the bronzes back to um, Benin City. I hope the British Museum takes a step up as well in the near future. Enormous, enormous benefit. Um, you, you, you've got to understand the, the British military expenditure of 1897 took away a lot of a lot of things from us. It took away to some extent our confidence. It took away our dignity. It took away quite a lot. So the fact that these things is going back to uh, where they were originally taken away, it is like we are restoring back that which was lost. It's now back home. The same, the same excitement was expressed when the artifacts was uh, um, uh, presented to His Royal Majesty of Monobanedu Ukua Polo Polo of uh, Eritiawa. I remember what they said. I am Uro Tinde Beadio Waneo. You know? You know? <laughs> I think the benefits really can't be measured. Um, can't be measured physically. It's more emotionally from the people of Benin. Um, but not just the people who live in the vicinity. But really, everybody in all parts of the world who's had anything to do with these bronzes, they can actually claim the moral high ground now because they are taking part in returning these items to where they belong, where they were stolen initially by the British. So I think it's going to uplift many people in many countries around the world. I believe there are, but we don't exactly know how many. Um, but because they... They command such a high value, I can't see small individuals returning each item. But what is happening is when each item of uh, bronze is authenticated and goes to, for auction, for example, at Sotheby's or Christie's, they, they won't sell them. You know, they, these are now tainted with the theft that occurred in 1897. So really, this value will just go down as years come. And I hope the owners of these items would really look at what's happening and just take the ball by the horns and hand them back. For example, uh, Jesus College in Cambridge, they've got this remarkable uh, cockerel, <coughs> which was um, given to them by a member of the expedition in 1897, in 1930. And although there's been contact between Cambridge and the royal household, it hasn't yet been handed back. So let's hope what's going on can kickstart that handing over process. They, they could not to stop them from doing it uh, because uh, you've got to understand majority of these artifacts are in the hands of private collectors. It is a private property if we're looking at it from the legal point of view. Uh, regardless of the fact that they were stolen from uh, or they were looted from the or carted away from the royal palace. Uh, they could, but uh, the expectation is that morality. Uh, I must say, I've been in the UK now for a number of years, and I've come, I've lived with them. I understand their culture. Uh, they understand. They understand the sentiment that is attached to these artifacts, and they also know that uh, this artifact means a lot to us. And I'm sure this is one of the things that is driving their passion to write wrongs that were done to us years ago. Uh, I, I'm not so much sure that the majority of the people or collectors that has these artifacts are keen to retain them. They want them to go back. But we just need to look for a way 
to engage them. I'm very, I'm very happy, Lance. Um, there was a journalist from New York who wrote an article about Tim and I and the work we've done. Uh, this was in the summer last year. Um, this highlighted that we, so far, have been the only people that managed to return two items to Benin City. But of course, since then, to hear other institutions come on board, especially Germany, what they're doing, I think, is, is, is truly a wonderful, remarkable gesture. I feel my work is partially complete until the whole of the artifacts that is in the Western world has returned back. That may never happen, but I feel my contribution and the contribution of on Joey Council and the contribution of Steve Dustin, Mark Walker and Tim uh, Awoyobi has opened up the doors for other people to start returning these artifacts. I remember what uh, Chief Steve said to me when we started engaging. He said, we want to use this as a stepping stone so that when other people that are holding this artifact see what we've done, this will motivate them to start doing the same. And it's happened. We, we know of uh, the uh, Oxford University, they're planning to return some of the artifacts. Steve and uh, Mark Walker and team, we had a meeting not quite long ago, sometime last year, at the, the British Museum. Uh, a number of stories. Uh, you've heard about uh, uh, Philip Burnaby, he's written books. There's a lot of excitement, a lot of buzz. But I would like to say that we contributed to this buzz that is going around. Yeah, I'm very excited to hear that the uh, Royal Highness Nooba um, is aware of what's been happening. Um, his father was a magnificent man and uh, the gesture he gave Tim and I were two bronze leopard's heads which were wonderful. They're still together um, with me. Um, certainly, I think it's right to say that the royal household and also the Nigerian government or governor um, when we took those two back, have seized the opportunity, maximised that publicity on the return. And that was, a, that was very worthwhile doing because those celebrations have gone around the world to really establish and affect the curators and people in charge of these museums and institutions to return them today. You have opened the gateway for these artifacts to be returned. And I'm sure His Royal Majesty was, is also pleased with what you've done because you've served your, your empire and your kingdom very well. But you must not relent. You must not say because the euphoria is there now that we relent in our effort. Let us continue to fight to ensure that all the artifacts that are in the Western world are returned. And now let's also start to tell our stories in terms of the benefits these artifacts, when returned, will bring to the Benin Kingdom in terms of increasing tourist attractions, increasing visit, and also ensuring that our stories and our histories remain at the back burner as we do or continue to uh, function in our daily activities. I'd love to visit Benin and, and see the finished museum with the bronzes back. That would be a very special time, I'm sure, for both Tim and I. I mean, I, I do always remember um, there's a letter here, which was from the previous Oba, and it's addressed to Mark Walker, um, although it's basically giving myself and Tim R. Y. and the knee mandate to act on behalf of the Oba to bring these bronzes back. Now, without stress to Mark, his objective was to get two back. My objective and Tim's was to return them all. So, we've ha what's happening in different countries, I believe, our objective is coming to an end, which I'm very pleased and quite proud to, uh, to say. Um, although I haven't, I haven't met you, sir, um, Your Royal Highness, um, I wish you every happiness and every success. Um, really seeing these items being returned to the spiritual home. They belong to you. They should be in the museum, run by um, the royal household. Um, and I do believe you'll, you'll grow from strength to strength.
But more importantly, the generations that follow in, in Edo State will not have that emptiness inside. These items have finally come back. I wish you every, every happiness. Well, um, I think it's difficult, and, and I was very surprised that Sal went through. Um, I, I, I believe it's going to grow increasingly difficult to sell these items, especially now with the bulk return of the bronzes. But I don't know. When, you, when you've got our pieces of artwork, that, that, that's that type of value. Um, sometimes it's difficult, but I think slow but sure will win the race. Now, I don't think you'll get back all of them, um, but I think a substantial uh, amount of bronzes are coming back. The substantial amount will still help the people's heart and soul heal. Uh, and generations that have gone down in the past have suffered. Um, but future generations will not feel the emptiness in their heart in Benin City and Edo State. Um, there's a photograph that was taken um, on that punitive expedition of the bronzes, uh, all lined up. They've just been hacked off the walls literally with a hammer and chisel. Um, they've all just piled up, and there was an estimate in that photograph between four and five thousand. I can remember. Um, most of them, I may not be able to mention all their names, but I do know our Ojoe uh, Pa, Bernard, engineer Bernard Wogien was there. He was the lead, he was the person that led the entourage. Uh, I also remember uh, Pa Steve Igbe was there, he, one of the Dionine. Uh, pa Dr. Tao Idemudia was also there. Dr. Samuel Egariba was there. Uh, Princess uh, um, Akenzwa was there, which is the daughter of uh, Prince Edu Akenzwa. I think two, three of the daughters were there. Um, there was also Pa Dikin Osunde was there. There was Madame uh, Papetua Idao was there and uh, a host of other people which I may not be able to remember all of them but they were all there, we were, we were many, we were more than 20 of us that were there and uh, to capture this historical moment. Well, I would like to say thank you on behalf of the Odeonwe Council for the wonderful work that you did. Not only coming to that meeting, you also remember these people made contributions, financial contributions up to about five thousand pounds that enable us to duplicate those uh, the two um, diaries that we sent home. I would like to say, on behalf of our dear way council, you've done a very good job. The seeds that you saw on that day has germinated, has started to bear fruit. You need to be able to hold your head high, hop and tall. The ancestors will always remember what you have done. You and I'm very excited, very excited, very excited. Because in those early days, it, we, we, we're treading unknown territory. Yes, that's correct. And we were learning all that's the time. Correct. That's correct. And everyone we were dealing with didn't know what yeah, to do or that's how to steer us. And it's not just that. Remember when we first spoke, you said you weren't quite sure because you you spoke to somebody who was trying to link you up with a pilot. And you weren't quite sure that we'll yeah. be able to... Yeah we'll be able to do the proper lead. Yeah, well, I'd like to mention uh, a chap who lives in Asaba, uh, Sam Toyo, who was a great friend in the Witcher Land Expedition. And he actually, he delivered a letter by hand uh, to the Royal Household to try and get the communication going. But um, in that early days, we didn't hear a response. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad we succeeded. Yeah. We succeeded. Sounds good to you, Beth. I would like just to mention, before we finish off, um, in 2009, I was very humbled to receive a uh, chieftaincy by um, the Emir of Borgu Kingdom. This took place um, at a Borgu Gani festival. And they gave me a title of the Mabudi of Borgu Kingdom, which translates to the one with the key. Thinking about the bronzes, I now finally understand the meaning behind that translation. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, um, like I said, uh, with me, um, uh, the whole experience has been serene because um, a lot of people ask me, why are you always fighting? 
um, especially when it comes to the Bini issues, you you tend to go beyond uh, what is expected. I was told by my father that uh, we come from the royal families as well. Uh, my great 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 grandfather was Oba A. Sonia. You know, and those are some of the things that motivate me when it comes to uh, fighting for what belongs to the Benin. I'm a Benin man to the core. Well, this is mission complete. Yeah, great. Thank you. It's been a pleasure working with you. And you, Charles. Thank you. Pleasure.